Normally when people upgrade, it's not every year, it's every two years or three years. And one thing that I wanted to do was see how the iPhone 12 Pro Max is after having the iPhone XR for two years. I'm not like every other tech YouTuber, like those big ones that upgrade every single year because normally consumers don't do that. But let's take a look at the iPhone 12 Pro Max and see how I like it after a few days of using it. If you're new here, my name is Armand and I make tech videos based on the tech that I usually use on a daily basis. And it kind of pertains to myself as a college student studying mechanical engineering. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then please consider liking and subscribing. One thing that I always wanted after getting the iPhone XR was having a better camera system that can do portrait mode on more than just people. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max has three cameras. So it has a regular wide lens, an ultra wide, and a telephoto lens. And these cameras were supposed to be quite a bit better from last year and also especially the XR. Basically they have a lot of software features like deep fusion, night mode, and that kind of helps enhance the photos and that's something I was really excited about. Taking a look at the cameras and what I've seen from using it, it doesn't seem like a crazy drastic improvement. It obviously looks way better than the iPhone XR, but at the same time, it still resembles an iPhone photo. It's not like a DSLR. I was hoping that it would be on that next level. Now for video, I haven't gotten the chance to test it out fully yet, but stay tuned and subscribe if you want to see a video like that and let me know down in the comments as well. But with video, that's where probably one of the biggest updates is as it can support 4k 10 bit video which is quite crazy for a phone to handle and also the stabilization is supposed to be a little bit better than the other models coming out this year because of the sensor being stabilized and not the lens and that's supposed to help it look a lot smoother i also really liked the navy blue i was really hoping for a navy blue phone to come out this year and it did and in person it looks really nice they're calling it pacific blue but I think in reality it is more of a navy blue and it's a matte finish so it looks really nice. I, I saw the regular iPhone 12 in person and that blue did not look as nice as this. That matte finish just kind of elevates the color and makes it look a lot more elegant. Now when the iPhone XR came out it was very controversial because of the screen. It was a LCD panel and it was less than 1080p. Now they've kind of fixed that with the newer models but I originally chose the iPhone XR because it was supposed to have quite good battery life and better than the iPhone XS, which was the Pro model at the time. And I basically went with the iPhone 12 Pro Max this year because it was a bigger phone and I wanted the larger screen, but also because of the battery life. And from what I've noticed, the iPhone 12 Pro Max battery life is definitely better than the iPhone XR. Using the screen outdoors, it is very bright and it is very capable and I don't have as much issues looking at the screen as I did with the iPhone XR. And overall, the color reproduction and just the resolution of the screen is noticeable to me now, having it side by side and comparing it. And also the colors are just much more vibrant, deeper blacks, and it shows a lot more contrast. And it's just a beautiful screen to look at. And that's something that I think it should be part of the conversation if you're considering upgrading. If you really want a really good screen for content consumption, then the new phones will definitely bring you that. Even if you go with the non-pro models, they're still gonna have a much better screen compared to what you're used to with the 10R. Talking about what I've noticed as a difference because some people may not notice everything and the things that you use the most is what you're probably gonna notice the most if it changes. And for me, the speaker quality is better. It is louder and calling is a lot better and also Wi-Fi signal is better. It is quite a bit faster and I'm surprised to see the improvements because I always knew that the Intel modems or whatever they had in the iPhone XR was subpar compared to Qualcomm and this year they went back to Qualcomm and it is surprisingly noticeable. One thing that's also coming out this year with the new phones is 5G, but the thing is that 5G isn't really fully supported. I've tested out 5G on my girlfriend's phone because she has AT&T and they have their low band 5G service going on right now. And basically it is quite faster compared to LTE. And as far as range and what that goes, we haven't tested out too much because we're mostly at home and we're mostly on Wi-Fi. And that's something important to take into consideration because if you're mostly at home, then 5G won't really matter. And 5G is not accessible everywhere and is not really built out to the full potential that it has. And it's gonna be some time before we get there. So don't let 5G be one of the main reasons that you wanna upgrade. That's not something that you will notice, but 
if you're on LTE, you will get a little bit better signal strength because the Qualcomm modems in the phones are a lot better than the Intel ones in the previous phones. Something else that's kind of controversial with the new phones is the lack of the 120 hertz display, but I haven't really noticed it. I have the iPad Pro, which is supposed to have one, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max is very smooth. It doesn't necessarily have the same snappiness as maybe like one of those new Galaxy devices, but at the same time, it's so optimized and it works so well that it still seems smoother than the older devices. And it's also a little a bit snappier. The new phones have six gigabytes of RAM and opposed to my iPhone XR with three gigabytes, I do see a difference there. And I was kind of surprised to see it because usually Apple optimizes things so well. But the thing is I have some apps in the background stay open much longer. Like usually on my iPhone XR, if I'm switching between YouTube and going through different applications, then when I go back to YouTube, it usually kills it because YouTube is sucking up more power and it's a little bit heavier of an app compared to maybe messages, the camera, the email app so it definitely just kills it right away on the iPhone 10R but now with the 12 Pro Max it doesn't do that and a lot of apps stay open in the background a lot longer which for me is really helpful because it does speed things up it's not like a crazy must change your phone type of feature but it is noticeable and it is very nice to see because even though those few seconds or even like 30 seconds that are waste is not that much and it's not like a crazy impact on your life but it is nice to see especially if you're going to be spending more money this year then you want to see some improvements that are very noticeable even in speed and overall with my first impressions i have to say that I'm still trying to figure out whether this phone is worth the upgrade because in 2020, when we're going through a pandemic, it doesn't seem like $1,200 for a phone is really necessary. And unless you're in the market for one or you can afford one, then the decision is a little bit tough. And for me, I'm trying to figure that out for myself because I have the iPhone XR and it technically works perfectly fine. There's no reason that I absolutely need an upgrade. So I'm trying to figure out whether this upgrade is really worth it or not for someone coming from an older device, especially when there's probably going to be more drastic changes next year or the year after that. And these devices will all be supported until then without any issues. So if you're interested to see what my perception is of this phone and in the final review, then stay tuned, subscribe and like for more content on the iPhone. 12 Pro Max, as well as checking me out on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for extra content. If you want more fun content, TikTok, I post some funny stuff on there. So check it out if you like. And until next time, take it easy with some tea, and I'll see you guys in the next one.